there. No. Anyway, let's uh, let's get started. Go ahead, guys. Welcome to Movie the Podcast. That's right, Movie the Podcast. It's a wacky, smacky grab bag week. We're just completely off uh, format because we're leading into your favorite time of year, the Moldies. We're also a little, uh, we, are, we are referencing a movie that has been brought up on the show about 8,000 times. At least, at least yeah. a franchise that's you, been you brought up that, a lot. You say that. It's been mentioned like twice. I, don't I feel know. like it's, it's quite God a few, because it's fun to it. say. Yeah, I've just mentioned it a lot. And I also, mentioned Ghoulies and Critters quite ghoulies, a bit, and one of those movies college. are... Apparently there's a fourth Ghoulies that Jim Wynorski directed, I had no oh, idea about. If Jim Wynorski directed it, it's going to have more titties. more titties, because this movie... <laughs> uh, yeah, God, was, what did we watch? I, I we watched you. Ghoulies 3, Ghoulies Go to Schoolies. Uh, we were there <laughs> at, oh, that would have been a better title. No, it's called... It's, it's Ghoulies, called Go, to Ghoulies Go to College. Go to College. I um, I had a great Homer Nixon moment with my girlfriend explaining her the movie. She's like, is it like Goonies? I was like, well, being as they both spell and pronounce her name differently, I don't think so. I don't think – here's a fun fact. I don't think I've ever seen any Ghoulies film I definitely all the saw way the first through. One. I've never um, seen – this is the, my first viewing of any Ghoulies film. And uh, I'm going to bury the lead. I, I can't wait to watch the rest of the series. And so here's the deal, right? Like, I don't know if anyone else has this I, sort of Here's, here's memory. the deal. What is the intended the audience for this movie? For, uh, <laughs> 14 year old PJ, 14-year-old PJ finding this on Cinemax trying to look for something but, to whack But there is no <laughs> horror in this horror movie. Like, no. uh, anyway, go on, go on. But, like, so I don't know if this is, like, does anyone else, like, Back in the day when VHS tapes were a thing and you had to go rent things, right? I just speci- I have specific memories of walking around and there was a spe- there was there was only one place. It was a non it was an independent movie rental shack in Mount Airy, and it yeah, was like it was an the, old wooden house. Was it all oh, around, that? around? And it would be like it was just movies on tapes and then or ta- on on shelves, and the movies would all be sitting there with their covers out. I just remember being a little yeah. kid. We'd be running whatever bullshit my mom wanted to rent, but I would wander over to the horror section because, like, the covers were always, and I would just make up my own stories about what these were about. And I always, the ghoulies, like the 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 like the the, the lead, the, the mo. I'm like, it's, it's the with three the suspenders, yeah. So I'm gonna call yeah. it the mo ghoulie kind of coming out of the toilet image of that of that tape has always been in my head is like, what yeah, the fuck it, is this it, about? Somehow, even though they're not um, alphabetically related, it was always directly next to the Sleep White Camp box in my head. Like, oh, that's, right. yeah. that's where they go. And, and oddly enough, I'll throw in one I always remember, which is a movie I think Gogs actually watched. Uh, he didn't watch it for the show, but I think he talked about it on the show. There was a movie called Defcon 4. It's the best post ever, cover. yeah. That I remember very, very uh, specifically. I've never I, seen the movie, but I can describe to you the the cover of like verbatim. The, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I was watched it on like Amazon Prime or something. No, it would be a whimsical pop up for movie the podcast once we hit it big. Is we should open up a video store where we have VHS tapes of all the movies we've watched oh, lining the walls. Fun. That's a fun idea. I love that. Um, idea. How would that make money? It would be. It would. It would. It would, it would, it would be like this thing. Yeah, it would be like show, Alex. It never makes any money. We would, we would now, dude, I don't know if you know this, Alex, but this show is in the deep, deep red. <laughs> like, well, it's, we better call well, Derry. You know, this, you know, this is this is very red. rich coming from Mister Aerith, who's under SEC investigations for the movie pass debacle. <laughs> <laughs> but being so anywho, for pizza, though, that's uh, that's like stuff you can write off. You can't write that's off. That's true. That's true. Weird, yeah, you're right. I don't know if we can write off art installations. Can I write off? No, 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 no. If we put it in Goggs' house, we can write it off as a home office. That's true. I just did my taxes. You should have seen the shit I wrote off for for my artwork. You do long form taxes? I don't do a long form. I do it through TurboTax, but I do I do I do count Artevel Tapo as a business, and I do itemize shit because do it. Why not? I mean, if, if Joe Biden's going to look at every $600 transaction on Venmo, you might as well write some art supplies off. I feel like Joe Biden slows me like $400. Oh, mm. uh, yeah. All of us. Uh, anyway, let's talk. Let's, uh, let's get going. Um, mm. Let's get it on until we die. <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I forgot all about that. Um, all right. <laughs> what did y'all watch this week? Alec. Uh oh. Alec is. Oh, he's still there. He was muted for a I watched. I don't I watched a bunch of stuff. Hell, Hell yeah. yeah. 
uh, if I can get my stupid phone list to come up. Biden. Um. Okay, so it looks like I watched six things, but I'm pretty sure I Holy watched. Holy shit! God damn. But uh, at least six things. Um. I was there for three of them. Spaceballs. Uh, oh, yeah. The Naked Gun and uh, according yeah. to my phone, according to my phone, Bravia and Butthead do the universe. I'm pretty sure that's Bravia. Bravia. Beavis. <laughs> um, Tony Bravia. <laughs> but I watched uh, watched those three movies, and those are all. It was the uh, uh, the original Naked Gun, the first one, the OG. Yep. Hell yeah. Yep. The from the file of the police squad. Yeah, um, I I I used to love those movies. That you know, I I reference this constantly. Talk about things you talk about the show time. Those uh, Naked Gun movies were always on HBO. Like they showed up all the fucking time on HBO. I love them. I watched them a ton of them. They uh, they're a lot of fun. Oh yeah, well, the first one. Like, I'm assuming the I know the I know for a fact the second one is the third one. I think even younger. I was kind of could take or leave, right? Because it was. Very repetitive. I remember the second one very well. Which, which one has the bit with O.J. Simpson with the afro where he can't get through the door without walking through sideways? Is that the third one? That's the uh, second, I, I, I believe. I oh, okay. It's not the first one. Um, I watched the Lego Batman movie. That movie oh, yeah. is a banger. Um, what else? Uh, two... And two new movies that just came out a few Ooh. weeks ago. New um, movies? Both on Hulu. One yeah. is the re- the retirement plan. The new yeah. Nick Cage, or there's probably a new one since then, but the, the, for a week it was the newest Nick Cage movie. Yeah, he's had but like, it hasn't been out very long. Um, What's it about? I don't think I've heard of the retirement plan. He is like an old assassin a washed up like assassin who uh, is living drunk, just drunk and living in like the Cayman Islands and his daughter and his daughter's daughter get into trouble with the mob or something somehow. And they go to him for help and he helps them. He kills everybody. Hell yeah. Um, it's not bad. It's a type of help. It's okay. <laughs> it was an hour and a half long. Like it's, it was perfectly cromulent. Perfectly acceptable. Uh, Ron uh, <laughs> Ron Perlman's in it in a side role, and he's not he's fun. Um, Ernie Hudson's in it for a little bit, and he's fun. Uh, Jackie Earl Haley plays the bad guy. And he's pretty good as the bad guy. Oh yeah, love Jackie Earl Haley. Uh, yeah. The only thing I couldn't get past. Remember from Dodgeball, the really tall, skinny guy who doesn't know who Steve the Pirate is. Yeah. Oh, yeah. the guy from um, Grandma's Boy. Avatar? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, no. He's yeah. in this, in, like, a serious role as, like, a oh, no. CIA <laughs> agent, like, double-crossing somebody. And I'm like, what? Does he make robot noises? Yeah, I was just about to say, <laughs> oh, my like, it, took, it took a while to figure out it was him, because, like, I mean, when Grandma's Boy came out 20 years ago? Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Possibly oh. more. And, like... He still looks exactly the same, but also 20 years older. And, like, he has, like, a kind of, like, a half beard and, like, longer hair. But as soon as he talks, it's still the same voice. I mean, that guy sounds just like the guy from Grandma's Boy and uh, Dodgeball. And I looked it up. I was like, oh, it is the same guy. Can, can we all just sign off on that being the best Happy Madison movie, though? Cause all, Grandma's all Boy? Like, yeah. I mean, it's way up there for me. I'm, I'm still going to – I'm going to hold a candle for uh... – for Happy know. Gilmore. Happy Gilmore. I love the water boy. That expression. <laughs> yeah. Uh, um, what's the one that I, I would love to revisit for the show, but I'm sure it's still trash? Is it something wild with Zach? Um, oh, that's Zach? bad. Yeah. Yeah. Galifianakis, isn't it? <laughs> no, no, no. It's um, the guy from the guy from Saving Silverman. One of the Steve buddies. Zahn. Steve Zahn. It's like yeah. the, uh, Steve Zahn. the one where he's like a wilderness show host. Yeah. yeah, he's like a, he's like a homemade Steve Irwin. Yeah, I haven't seen that. Um, I don't that recall being good. The, was that the one where the promo was like the shark had like goofy teeth and he's like, look at me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 
Um, look it up. You'll know exactly what I'm talking about. You'll be like, yeah, TJ was right. Hmm. First time you've ever said that. It's sold out of TJ's a dope. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing but Simpsons references tonight. <laughs> that show it sold out in five minutes. The last thing I watched was a movie called Self Reliance. I Did almost they, watched that. It's funny. The new Hulu movie with uh, Jake Johnson and Anna Kendrick. Um, I liked it a lot. It's pretty funny. Um, produced by the Lonely Island, Andy Samberg oh. for a little bit. Oh, hell yeah. Um, it's pretty funny. Jake Johnson uh, wrote, directed, and starred at, and I like him. He's a, I think I like he's a funny guy. guy. He's like, like Peter guy. Parker? Like, or, yeah. Um, yeah. Peter B. Parker? It's like an action comedy, right? Um, yeah. As not as much action as the trailer will lead you to think. But yeah. there's still some action. <laughs> not and as much boy definitely. girl as box art really do you think. And it's still a <laughs> uh, disappointment. It's a lot of uh it's a lot of fun. Um I liked it a lot. Christopher Lloyd shows up for a minute. Oh, oh wow. Is. He has a really uh good scene. Um But I thought it was good. And like I like Jake Johnson a lot and I like some of the other stuff he's done. I can't remember the name of the movie. The has got uh no. <laughs> <laughs> um, Susan was it the mummy? Plays his dead mom, and uh, DK Simmons is in it as like her former lover, and he's in his mom's house, and he's trying to like settle her estate or something. I think he wrote and directed that too. That was pretty good. Yeah, you uh, you were right, Sean. It's Tom Cruise's dead best friend in the mummy. Oh, I was just saying the mummy because somebody else said the mummy. I didn't. I'm not even bad at that, really. Yeah, I was joking. I was joking, guys. I remember he was in the mummy. That was the, that was the joke. I know, Alex. I know, Alex didn't mean the mummy. I was just joking. <laughs> I was I was being comedic. I was trying to be funny. Oh, I was just it was, trying to be it was just a goof. Yo, I can't <laughs> just you my failed miserably. It was just a, it was a spoof, guys. It was a spoof and a goof. A spoof and a goof. Um. Yeah, that's all I watched. I'm creeping in, creeping in the last episodes of, uh, I think this week, but the last episodes of uh, Fargo and Reacher will come out. Okay. Uh, both of those shows kick ass. Um, oh, there's a new uh, Mr. and Mrs. Smith show that's getting ready to come out. Yeah, I saw the promos. It actually looks pretty good. It's yeah. got, um, what's his Donald name? Glover. He's Donald Glover, Glover and I forget the 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 lady. But it looks pretty good. The, the promos look good. Um, Sean. Oh, me. Uh, I only watched one thing. I, I, watched, I watched a four-hour YouTube documentary on Billy Mitchell cheating in video oh, games. I start. I started. I got about forty-five minutes into it. I need to go back to it. I love. I, I got, love Sean because Sean and I both have the same weird brain rot where we watch so much YouTube that it's it <laughs> probably should be studied. But like, he yeah, like it's that, bad. He sent me that link, and even I was like, four hours. I'm like, ah, I'm good. Which is funny because I know for a fact you've seen Twin Peaks, all the pieces fit or whatever, which is like a twelve hour uh, documentary. Oh, no, 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 no. no, I watched. I no, we could. I watched <laughs> way longer. I watched that. Yeah, that one. The Friday Thirteenth one that's seven hours long. <laughs> TJ and I have been watching a fucking yeah. YouTube documentary series on Chris Chan for four years. <laughs> that I think is up to like sixty five hours. And not only that, I'm watching other shit about Chris Chan that I already know in betwixt these things. <laughs> yeah. So. Again, Sean and I have the same like <laughs> brain worm. We just we watch like <laughs> Yeah, it's ridiculous. I mean, I love it. I don't get me wrong. I, I like. I'm t- I'm taking movie watching to strange new places. Like. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so what's Billy uh, Mitchell up to? Oh, he's such a piece of shit. Like, it, it's funny. Like, I'm always bitching about how boring everything is, but I legitimately watch. There's an hour and a half segment on how scan lines work in a regular machine, and how it, the same scan line doesn't show up in Mame. Which again, oh, like right. you have, you have to yeah. swim in a certain depth of water, even know what the fuck Mame is. Well, the so, sad thing is, I knew immediately what you were talking of about. Course you so, did, yeah. 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 I would say probably everybody but Alec maybe would know right off the top of that because he's not nearly as fucking just pathetic as we are. But I don't think um, I don't. Do you know what Mame is? No, yeah. knows what Mame is. Yeah, I, I do. I, I I made a I built a Raspberry Pi. I know what the. Oh, fuck that's right. On. I forgot yeah. you built it. So. 
it's just funny, like, how into the weeds people... Like, we're talking about a guy who has a high score in Donkey Kong, which is a video game that came out during World War II. <laughs> and, uh... No, but, um... And people are like, there's lawsuits. Like, it's fucking fascinating. Like, the the esoteric long-form documentary with that people are making for free to put all this effort into it, like, it's it's, it's astounding, but that's that's it's, all I want. They they I mean, they're numbers. basically making it for negative income because he's going to sue all of them. Oh, one billion percent. He's like the Harlan Ellison of arcade games. We also have yeah. to remember, though, the brilliant fucking documentary that I think all of us learned about Billy Mitchell on in The King of Kong. Oh, The King of Kong, yeah. Oh, that's a, that's a oh, lovely... Dogs is a big Steve Weeby fan. I remember... Like, I am. <laughs> I'm a Weeby Weeb. It's a... <laughs> it's a it's, you know, it's the, it's the Rocky of arcade cabinet games. Twin <laughs> Galaxies, Twin Galaxies, still is open. It's still yeah. there. I really did I tell you? It. Did I ever tell you guys that I saw Walter Day in person in in Washington D.C. No. Yeah, uh, there was a so the guy who runs Twin Galaxies or whatever. Yeah. Uh, he was Liz and I. Liz entertained uh, one of my ideas of doing something, and we went to I think it was the. <laughs> Uh, museum of it was like the portrait. It was like the portrait gallery or something. Some Smithsonian had. Been you wanted like, to go to the National Portrait Gallery. And it Chico? was. It was video game was art through the ages. It was. Oh, I remember when they had that exhibit. Yeah, that it was, was a specific thing for like video games. And like I'm walking through the lobby, and there's Walter Day in his full referee getup. I'm like, holy shit! I this wore is weird. <laughs> Timberland Butters on a date to the National Portrait Gallery, and I embarrassed everybody because that floor is very waxed. <laughs> yeah, but those butters are dope, so fuck oh, them. Oh, yeah, I mean, yeah, right, dead ass. What's your dead ass? <laughs> That's all I watched. Uh, Gox. Uh, most of the things that Alec watched, I also watched. So okay. Spaceballs rules. Uh, Nick you know, rules. surprising, I, the, Spaceballs is one of those movies where the internet has ruined me because I always loved Spaceballs, but generally not liked, which I think is really fucking By, weird. Really? Like I, yeah. I is, it, is it not like in comparison to other Mel Brooks movies? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. it's like lesser Brooks, but I love Spaceballs. I don't Maybe know. Maybe because it was like one of my first Mel Brooks movies, but I love yeah. that movie. It was Spaceballs and History of the World were my first two, and I will always love you, those films. History of the World was a little later for me, but yeah. Yeah. Because I think like I saw like Spaceballs and then Men in Tights, and then I think I got more exposed to like... The I mean, like Dracula like, Dead Loving It has to be low uh, low I tier. forgot about that. And yeah, whatever that, was, that recent Hulu abomination probably turned out to be. Yeah, I think so bad. I think oh, my number watch one, it? Alec. I remember I watched, it, it wasn't a movie; show, it was a it. show. I watched yeah. like the first episode, and mm-hmm. it was not good. It was it wanted to be drunk history, but it wasn't funny. Like drunk That's history, a low bar to aspire to. Drunk history isn't always funny, but some some of those things are bits are hilarious. Oh, well, some of them are not. Out. It was yeah. yeah they were um, but man, this it was just, this was not good. Like more Brooks used to hang it up. He's two hundred years old. <laughs> I think that I think that uh, I would put uh, Young Frankenstein as S tier favorite Brooks film. Well, Young Frankenstein oh, and Blade yeah. and Saddles came out like within a year of each other. That's fucking insane. Yeah, uh, high anxiety also underappreciated. Um, <laughs> anywho, love Spaceballs, love Naked Gun, and then I got to see Beavis and Butthead do the Universe for the first time, oh, and uh, amazing. that movie is really good. That movie's That's silly as hell. Yeah, um, so Beavis yeah. having like. Like an emotional moment talking to Siri for 20 minutes is just like the funniest <laughs> and saddest thing of all time. Um, Dude, I think I mentioned it when we talked about it because I know Alex talked about it and I talked about it. The scene where he gets pulled over and Beavis is telling the cops that they have white privilege and they can't pull them over is like very funny. <laughs> yeah, they just, yeah. Uh, it's a great um, movie. And then the only, the only other thing I watched is I, I revisited uh, Snowpiercer. Uh, movie's pretty How's good. Yeah, I enjoyed I that movie. I would good. love to see the original or whatever the cut was supposed to be before oh, that, it got all a, hacked there's up. A, there's a story yeah, there? I yeah, the, well, the Weinstein, and Harvey Weinstein, and the worst thing he's ever done, apparently, has uh, cut that movie all to shit because it was, really? like, too artsy or something. Oh, I didn't. I'll to, yeah. I wonder if the <laughs> international version is, is different. I don't know. That's still, that's still a great, that's a great movie. Yeah, I, I love that movie. I yeah. love Snowpiercer. I love the idea of... Uh, He's like, nah, I won't be in charge. I'll just destroy humanity, maybe, and let's just let's get it on. Um, till we die, till which we die. might be soon. 
Chris Evans is pretty great in that movie. Ed Harris is pretty great in that movie. I, I love um, just like the wacky ass conceit of that movie. Like it's it's yeah. like so fucking ridiculous, but I yeah. love it. Yeah, it's bananas. Um, John oh, Hurt. Shout out John Hurt. Uh, isn't that the Korean, the like, Korean director that I love? That isn't that the Parasite? The Train guy? to Busan. Yeah, I don't think Train to Busan, but Okja. It's it's uh it's Bong oh, Joon Ho, isn't it? Oh. I it's thought it was the guy that directed Parasite, I think. It is it is Bong Joon Ho. Yeah, yeah, that's him. Yeah, Snowpiercer, Parasite. Okja, Parasite. Memor- Memoirs of a Murder, which is really good. Oh, I, I just made me think of, because we're talking about Koreans. Alec, have you ever seen the show Kim's Convenience on Netflix? You might like that. You like those kind of sitcoms, I think. It's I not watched, that. I watched some of it because it was recommended. Somebody said it was similar. Similar to Shit's Creek, and I only watched a couple yeah. episodes. It's not bad. Uh, Simu Lu is playing a Korean, so you're doing like Korean stolen valor. Uh, mm. Can't can't watch it. Can't take it. He's not mm-hmm. Korean. Well, then that's everything. He's a, that's he everything. Is a, he's I'm a good actor. Though. Yeah, he is handsome too. Handsome. He Korean. Plays, he plays Korean, Korean really well. Oh, um, uh, anything yeah. else, Mister Gog? No, that's it. Thank you. What? All right. Wrap it up. Oh, uh, PJ. Pardon. Pardon. Terrible. Pardon. 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 Uh, I watched one and a half things or one and a quarter things. What is it? What does the TV show count as? Uh, a, thing. a thing. Yeah. Uh, well, let's we'll start off with that. I watched the first episode of Marvel's Echo. Uh, pleasantly surprised. Hmm. Oh. It feels like Daredevil. In the best way possible. Oh. Uh, but yeah, I, I I think there's six episodes. I'm finished. It. Uh, I yeah, it's very short. It's only like five five or six episodes. You watch it yet, Alec? I did not, but they're all out. I'm going to watch it. It's good. I've it heard I've like... heard nothing. I've heard nothing but good things about it. All right, so I'm not familiar I'll... with the character. Who is? What is the character? She's she's deaf. She's like deaf Daredevil. But she, she was in a, was it? she was in New Avengers. She yeah, played, uh, was it? She was Ronan in New Avengers for a while. Yeah, Ronan, it Ronan in one of the stupidest reveals in history. Like, but uh, yeah, well, I like Ronan characters. was Hawkeye right for a minute, and then they did like that, like Zorn thing, like that no, post yeah. retcon no, deal. Yeah. Well, well, no. Uh, or did she just Echo, assume the identity? Echo was the first Ronan, then okay. Hawkeye. It was stupid. Uh, dumb, dumb shit. Anyway, it's fine. Uh, but the show's good because I'll be honest. Like when they, when the showrunners of Daredevil, Daredevil were like, "No, it's going to be like more hard edge, and it's going to be like the original Netflix series." I mean, I think we talked about it a little bit when we reviewed those couple episodes of The Punisher. But I was like, "Well, they can't ever do this again." And I'm not saying that this is like Punisher level of brutal, but like it feels just like Daredevil. Like it feels that same kind of like it does not feel like a Disney Plus show. Is the best way I can describe it. Like it felt like Daredevil, and I'm uh, cautiously optimistic of not only of this series but like of the eventual Born Again show if it ever comes out. Uh, so yeah, that. And then I watched a, another Shutter original called um, Attachment. Is that the one where uh, your review was sometimes your overbearing mother is right? Is that the movie? Yeah. So uh-huh. it's I really liked it. It's not like it's not like like great but i thought like it's it's a good story with like really good like i thought the performances were really good i think overall i i liked the movie it's lacking a little something like it doesn't have like kind of that punch it is another uh possession movie but it also is a movie that kind of teases you with what could really be happening under the surface i think my if i only if i have one complaint about the movie is that it kind of takes too long to reveal like the big secret of the movie. And then once it gets there, it's kind of already lost all its steam. Cause like, they don't really do anything like super insane. And then it's kind of over, but overall I, I thought it was really good. Like I thought that again, I, I liked, I liked the premise, basically these, these two uh, girls that like one is from uh, Denmark and one is from England. Like, they meet um they meet each other while the one is on vacation and they like form like a fast relationship and fall in love. But like the the one girl is acting kind of strange and like it's it's one of these things where it's like, are you kind of 
are you just anxious because you're in this new relationship and you don't know what's going on or are you you know what I mean like you're you're filled with anxiety because she ends up going back to meet the the mom of the the girl and the mom is like super strictly uh like a she's a um like it, it's it's uh, forgive me but is it still being Hasidic? It, Hasidic is just a blanket term, right? Like male and female are, are still Hasidic. That's just the sect of Judaism, or like the. I thought it. I thought yeah. it was just like like conservative or like traditional. That, I, that I, yeah, I think it's just like being yeah. Roman Catholic versus Polish Catholic. So the, the women, mother is like women can be Hasidic. Thank you. The, the mother is is in this Hasidic Jewish community, and she's very strict, and she's was very it like oh, no. She's a, oh. they're in England. It's a, okay. in London. Uh, so, but her mother's like very overbearing and kind of weird. And there's like stuff going on in the community is acting weird about her daughter. And it's like this whole thing. And then of course the, 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 the other girl in the relationship is, is, you know, she's out of place because she's from Denmark and she's not Jewish. And I don't know, there's a lot of like tension there. And she's like super nervous about being, being in this situation. And, I don't know, it's one of those movies where it kind of, I, I, I hate that term, elevated horror, but like it, that's what it is. I mean, it, it's taking a lot of anxiety about being in like a relationship and then adding this kind of supernatural possession element to it. I thought it was really good. It's like an hour and a half, doesn't overstay, it's welcome. Uh, it's definitely worth checking out. So, Attachment on, uh, on Shudder, another good one from Shudder. I don't think it's like top tier Shudder. It's not like When Evil Lurks, but it's definitely worth a watch. I thought, um, uh, both actresses, uh, both lead actresses who I wasn't familiar with either one of them. I thought gave really good performances. And the one, the one girl, once she is like possessed and you know, that's what she, she's, you know, what's going on with her. Like her physical acting is like very impressive. I thought like she, she felt like an entirely different person once she is possessed. I thought that was very impressive with a movie that doesn't really have special effects. Like they do a little bit of a voice thing. But like other than that, it's kind of just reliant on how she's like her movements, and I, I don't know. I thought overall a solid movie, eight out of ten. I'd recommend it. Uh, but that's all I want. So let's get into some titties. Lots of them, yeah. This movie's chock a box full of tit. This movie. This will get no less I than a seven from me just because of I that. I said it in the text. <laughs> this is the horniest movie we have ever watched. Like this movie. I mean, besides like, dog you food. Or Sean, oh God, uh, Sean asked earlier, who is this for? And it's, it's plainly obvious, right? This is for like horny teenagers that want to, like, remember, you, you didn't have your porn hubs back in 1988. But you, but I, I understand in, you know, in the macro, but in the micro, then why do you need to spend all that money on puppets if it's just a titty movie? Like, Hitty goblin movie with no like actual horror is a weird aesthetic. I mean, but but you, but you see the goblins that you can you can you can you know you can rent Ghoulies three and your mom doesn't know any better. But if you rent like Return to Savage oh, Beach, it's giving you like, co- like it's giving you cover. Basically. You think this, is, this you think this is a, a titty Trojan horse film? Yes, I, I'm not even joking, dude. I am dead serious. Like, I that is what this is. Like, I think it's fairly obvious because, like, w- the most care that's given to this movie are the titty scenes, and they are like copious. <laughs> like, They're fantastic tits, by the way. Every I, every I, every tit in here is I, a uh, number one. This is, this is like I, this is. All the I women was, in this movie are built to GOG standards. The, the this is what I like is the skinny I, blondes of the 90s. I, you know, the tall I live, butts. Obviously, I, I live a sad, solitary existence. But the whole time I'm watching this movie, I was like, God, GOG's watching this. Like, if Liz comes downstairs, like, if this bullshit. Or is Alex this what wife, you like? Alex's wife comes Yes. What's going on? I'm like, what are you watching? It's for <laughs> the show. Like... <laughs> no, it's, uh, oh, and I know your girlfriend knows you're a freak, so it's fine. But, oh, yeah. She's like women. What's up with that? Yeah, yeah, she's like tits. Like we're all the dicks. I'm like, I don't know. I said the same thing. <laughs> we're both disappointed. Yeah. Anyway, let's get into uh the Yank Fest. See, there you go. The I know Yank you're a Yanker. Fest. I have a question. Like, is like like don't yank a prankster from fucking Saturday Night Live? Is it is yanking a term for pranks that I don't know about? Are you asking us? We're yeah, we we were supposed to ask you because yeah, none of us enough. went to real college. Is Prank Week a thing? 
Have it you ain't. It, I tell you what, it wasn't at the venerable University of Maryland College Park. Um, maybe at Gutcher College. Did you do any but, panty race? Um, what was the name of the school? It was kind of close to Gutcher College. It was College. Close, It was like Gouye or something. <laughs> yeah. They showed it at the beginning, and I was like, "Sorry, we didn't all go to, <laughs> go to the Gouye." <laughs> Um, yeah, so anywho, Ghoulies 3, Ghoulies Go to School, direct-to-video, uh, what, never seen another Ghoulies. What did they school. have when you went to Maryland there? Was it just, like, Steve Francis and Chinese people? Like, what was it? Less, it was less Ghoulie-based. Um, mm. it was... Didn't like, you have Steve didn't Francis? You were in the Juan Reed? Dixon. No, oh, we, you were the Juan yeah, Dixon, okay. Dixon okay. and okay. Steve Blake... Um, Ron yeah, like sure. Prophet, or is that not no. the same? Okay. Um, who's the kid who went to Thomas Johnson and dunked on us who and was, everyone? Uh, who was the tight uh, end that ended up playing for San Francisco? Uh, oh, um, Vernon Duke Davis. Vernon Davis, that was it. Yeah, yeah. Vernon Davis there. led to one of the oh, greatest no, uh, press conference meltdowns in history. The I can't do it. Can't win with him. Can't do it. I'll yeah. do it. He's single-handedly responsible for uh, Mike Singletary <laughs> in the nursing home. Just saying, can't do it to a mirror over and over. What's the uh, – who's the other cat? There was a linebacker, Lights Out, who got oh, – Sean Mer- Merriman. Sean Merriman. He was there, oh, too. I remember well, – he, oh, I, remember I think he, he also powerbombed Tila Tequila through a volcano, and that's why she's a Nazi. I remember walking into the one of the main gyms at Maryland my freshman year, I think. And Why'd you do that? I wanted to. I wanted to pers- self improvement masturbation. I felt mm. like making myself better. Um, and I walk into the main gym. I look down on the floor, and someone is sitting on like the the row machine, like moving the whole stack up and down. I'm like, who the fuck is that? And my buddy, that's Sean Merriman. I was like, oh, that's terrifying. He's a big boy on the gas. Yeah. Anyway, um, Ghoulies three. Ghoulies go to school. The uh, the Ghoulie Mansion. I get. I don't know. I'm I'm speculating at this point, but you're, you're the movie opens with a guy. I guess it's from the past, like unsummoning the ghoulies back to their demon well, toilet. It says, it says it's in the past. And that's it's like eighteen like, years like, prior. Eighteen years ago, ago, yeah. And then I guess the ghoulie mansion got absorbed into Gutcher College, and now it's a frat house for the betas or the zetas or the alphas or whatever. No, the um, on a turtle. It's the gammas and the the deltas, I think, something like that. Yeah, yeah, it's two. Yeah, it's it two was Greek something letters. that rhymed. It was it, it was, was like beta, zeta, or something. I thought it was close something. to zeta, yeah. beta, potato, actually, which made me smile. I'm pretty sure it wasn't potato. The ghoulies, the ghoulies come out of the coolest toilet I've ever seen. Like, how is no, nobody made like, that toilet is just low key sitting in there with John, right? And no one's ever been yeah. like. What's up with this? It's legit. It's the old school like water closet toilet where the tank is like up, up like yeah. And you got to pull the chain. Yeah, the, you have to pull the chain. But like the whole thing made of, made of like sculpted ivory, like a relief that you would find in a Cthulhu film. Dude, like I, awesome. you know, like the most unbelievable part of this movie for me is the fucking that the kids are reading EC comics in like 1989 right. or whatever. Also, yeah. Matthew Lillard is in this movie for ten seconds. Oh. Um, when they're walking, was, when they're doing it was the his, long uh, shot, it was his film debut, according oh, to shit. IMDb. Yeah. That's, that's awesome. Awesome. Um, so anywho, eighteen years ago, the Ghoulies got unsummoned back into their turlet, and then now it's now, yeah. now. And, and you summon, like Sean said, you summon the Ghoulies by quoting this comic book. <laughs> yeah, it's the Ghoulish Comic Con. No. Um, so. The, that's a good one. Thank you. Um, that's a good like. You should you should start your own horror comic convention. I think you already got a name. That's a patent pending. Um, <laughs> so I, guess, I guess afterwards, after the guy unsummoned him, he just buried the one thing that can summon these demons back to our plane of existence behind some shoddy tile work right yeah. next to the bowl that they erupt from. Like, <laughs> I wouldn't just burn it. But, throw it in the trash. <laughs> but anywho, we're introduced to like Dougie or Stevie or whatever, and he's writing on the walls of his own bathroom because he's a member of this frat. And his foot goes through the wall, and he finds this comic, and he half summons the demons, but then he doesn't because he's got to go banging hard because that's like his whole point in this movie. Um, 
And then you're sort of introduced to the rest of the denizens of this school, and it's about to be prank week. And prank week means that the frats have to fight for the prank crown. And they're gonna do yanks all over the all over campus. They're and prank, they're prank yankers. <laughs> they're prank oh, yankers. God. Never yank a never yank a prankster. Um, I do love so. that, like, <laughs> even though everybody in this movie is, like, impossibly white, there is one uh, fraternity that is so white that the other white people have to comment on it nonstop. Yeah. yeah. I also, oh, yeah. I, I, it's got to be said, because I feel like every time we watch a movie in this time period where they're supposed to be, like, you know, these these vibrant 18, 19-year-olds, like, they all look 36 years old. Like, <laughs> I thought that the lead guy, I thought the lead boy was... Uh, <laughs> Was the fella who played Kirsty's dad from Hellraiser, but I was wrong. But he's got that same kind of stupid face. Well, definitely Hellraiser. If you really want to boil down the plot of Hellraiser, it was somebody that that yanked a crankster or whatever. Yeah, <laughs> Uncle Frank was a yanker. So this, it was this, also a horny Ghoulies movie, but in a horny, yeah. not like the kind that you want. Yeah, Very. yeah. This is like this is just Gremlins with nips. Um. Oh, so, yeah. in this, the, so we've set up the classic, the classic college dynamic, a la Animal House. You've got the, you've got Delta, the fun-loving, good-hearted boys that you're all rooting for against the neo-Nazi adjacent <laughs> Omegas. Um, and and they even gonna, they even say several times like calling them the Hitler Youth. Yeah. Yeah. Which is a which they lifted directly from Animal House. Did you all talking did you about all think of uh, the the Simpsons episode where Homer goes to college at all? Because especially with the dean, it's like crusty old dean. And I thought a lot about uh, the Robot House episode of Futurama, which is also just another takeoff in Animal House. I was thinking of that episode of the when Homer went to college, but like no, not I, when he actually went to college, but like when he watched that movie with the the, the bra bomb, and he's like, yeah, got yeah, this nerd dinger. <laughs> um. So anyway, the uh, so it's time for prank week or whatever, and so you've got the 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 dean of liberal arts, or maybe Maybe's the liberal all- arts professor. Well, he's a liberal arts professor, but he's also the dean of students. Goggs, local college expert. Does that ever happen? The dean's also teaching classes. Maybe I don't know. We don't. I don't even know. We had a dean. We had deans, but we don't know if we had a dean of students. I don't really recall a lot about the socio political structures of college. Is this one uh, of those like the gym teacher has to teach health kind of things? Like they I can't. Just... I might, it might be like a small liberal arts school thing. Like I went to uh, a knowledge factory with thirty four thousand people. They were just churning things out. So I didn't get a lot of the small college experience. It was more like going to work. So if there was going to be a prank war and everyone knew each other and there was a dean of students who was also teaching me about evil and literature, that would have been more fun. That would have been enjoyable. That didn't happen. Um, also, we didn't summon anything from our toilets, but, you know, I guess I could always try and go back to grad school, see if I can make this happen, make this dream a reality. Um, so it's prank week. Everyone's having parties. There's a get ready for prank week. The lead guy is in trouble with his main girl, because he's too busy out there yanking pranks with his boys, and she's decided to sleep with the other side. Uh, so uh, they find on the, this comic's been found. The ghoulies have almost been summoned twice, and then it ends up in the hands of Professor Ragnar, the dean of students, who then summons the ghoulies and oh, commands Ragnar. them around. <laughs> he commands them around to go. Uh, start some shit across, and so they're doing actual crimes. I, I uh, had a question because I wasn't paying that much attention. Sure. Um, but is he just reading the comic like for funzos, or does he know that this will cause some kind of ghoulification? Like, I he believe just, he read it for funzos to start with. If it is funny because he's like, "This is trash," but it's like in iambic pentameter, like it's a very well written <laughs> person. Well, comic book. Well, I believe there was a scene, and I was barely paying attention, but I believe there was a scene where he pulled out some sort of old piece of literature, maybe like some old, you know, cryptic text, and he's like, "Oh shit, this is actually 
the thing to summon the things from yeah, the no, plane is, of whatever. Is, somehow he had some other, like, book on, like, demonology or something. Yeah, it was ridiculous. So he put two and two together, and he realized this is the real deal. So he summons the ghoulies. The ghoulies show up in his office, and he's like, go get the alphas and the omegas, and because they're on double secret probation. And then the rest of the movie is just the ghoulies, like, like his, like, secretary gets tongued to death with That's, her own uh, tongue. That's Mrs. Krabappel. That's just the really? Yeah. Did, yeah. Wow. Shit, I, I thought didn't you were just being cute. I didn't realize that was her voice. No, that's, um, yeah, that's actually her, yeah. All right. Um, the one horny dude who was banging the chick on the rowing machine, he got toileted guy, to death. Okay, so, so hold on real quick. That guy, the guy that's, like, banging that chick, yeah. he acts like getting banged by her is, like, a punishment. A nightmare, it's yeah. so weird. Like, well, AIDS had just come out. Chick is um, that's, that chick is super hot, and the movie thinks that chick is hot because she is in most most scenes that she's in, she's either fucking somebody, trying to fuck somebody, or naked, or showering and off in between fucks. She like he she is fucking actively fucking this guy, and he's like, I gotta get out of here, and then he says something to his dick where he's like, We're safe now. Like, what is the matter with this guy? Also, uh, I'm sure you'll probably get into it, Gogs. But our two lead actors, and it's a story beat in this movie. It, it is another one of those like I really want to be with my best friend, but I'm stuck with this girl movie. <laughs> like, yeah. For what's, his, what's his name? What's his, his best friend's name? Is like Honcho or Squid one of them's named something. Skip. I know that. Yeah. yeah. Skip's the lead boy. This is also um, another one of those movies where it posits that people that are like 19 years old have these intense romantic relationships. Like, oh, I know I fouled up this time, Marsha. Like, it's like, come on, dude. Also, uh, I just want to make this point before I forget, I guess I texted TJ about it. In the lore of this movie, uh, according to them, when they get back to their destroyed house, the ghoulies who are roughly 18 inches tall, all of them, maybe two feet, yeah. somewhere in that neighborhood, yeah. drank... Two thousand beers in like an hour. Yeah, also, they, how did they fucked up by not having a scene where all the ghoulies had to piss really bad? Because that I mean, been... even ET had that scene where fucking ET's all shit faced. Yeah. Well, yeah. So anyway, it's prank war time. There's threats of expulsion. Skip's like, I'm gonna turn the beat around and not be a prankster no more. And I'm just gonna study these books and become I don't know. Let's say a tax attorney. So I feel like a hedge fund manager. Did they, they have hedge, hedge funds, funds back then? I don't know. Maybe not. Now, whatever the precursors for hedge funds were. Um, Savings and loan? Yeah, something something <laughs> shitty. So the then, building, the building and loan. Yeah, life insurance <laughs> salesman something. Also, so get, real quick, like this is um, – you remember that Patton Oswalt bit where it's like, I didn't know you could make a movie funny just by yelling ADR off screen? This is like all of that. Like oh, it's yeah. just constantly people yelling shit from off screen. Oh, yeah. It reminded me of uh, Penitentiary 3 that we watched where it's dare you. so much like crazy ADR <laughs> all over the place. Uh, oh, I love that, that movie though. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> yeah. So, anywho, uh, he's like, we're not going to be pranking no more. But now the ghoulies are doing the pranks. And, like, there's this one, like, like campus rent-a-cop who keeps getting ex exploded and killed. And he he loves his golf cart. And then you've got, like, the neighboring guys. There's a guys. Of fucking Wiley Coyote bomb in it that doesn't kill anybody. Yeah, he's like, oh, look, a bomb. And then it <laughs> explodes. Um, like, the like the evil frat leader's um, moped gets put in a tree and that's a bridge too far because now we're talking about, you know, stuff. There's a panty raid that, and I don't know, I don't know how this would work out, but like the, I mean, let's, let's the boys know. raided the house. It's just sexual assault. Like it's like, well, yeah. the, boys, the boys raid the house to steal the, the, the sorority's underwear and the sororities are like, oh, we're going to get them real. We're, we're going to really stick it to these guys by toplessly beating them with pillows for seven minutes. I'm like, yeah, huh. yeah, yeah I, don't, I, don't, I don't know. Well, the best reminded, offense is a good defense or whatever. It reminded me of uh, that episode of It's Always Sunny where they, they go on the, the ski the ski trip and they run yeah. into the, that guy that's literally from ski school and all his pranks are just, they're all just like, uh we can't, we can't do that. Like that's, yeah, that's sexual assault. Like that's what this movie is. It's just like all I can think of is, and I'm sure Gogs will appreciate it, is the Method Man lyric question: "What exactly is a panty raider?" Like, yeah. 
I was, all I, I was thinking about in remember the Bizarro episode of C Lab where they're gonna oh, threaten they're, they're threatening to, to to torture Quinn by having Bizarro what's her name have sex with him for hours. I was like, huh. Was it white Debbie? It yeah, Bly, yeah, Bizarro Debbie. There's a white Debbie? Uh, also, oh, there's, there's a, a white story? story? You've, uh, you've neglected to mention that the ghoulies have appeared. They're they are they are among us now. But oh, they the are, are among us. The they puppets are, are really good, by the way. They are horny. Those <laughs> ghoulies are horny as hell. Like the first time they show up, they're they're watching uh, that girl that that girl I was talking about earlier uh, getting plowed, and the ghoulies are way into it. Like they're like way way into it. And then uh, the ghoulies also talk like the Three Stooges. Like that's like all of their comedy is like, hey, a knucklehead, like, hey, like it's it's, yeah, it's it's all they seem to be doing. Yeah, whoever wrote this, like, pe- the comedy peaked at like nineteen like thirty eight or whatever. Yeah, it's a whole it's a whole thing. Um, so I mean that's the thing, like that's the whole the, the movie nothing continues. Nothing happens in this movie. It's a lot yeah. of effort for these puppets and shit for like literally nothing to happen where you're like, and I hope somebody gets sexually assaulted soon just so something happens in the movie. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's literally just, just puppets, bad, bad. Uh, you remember, uh, you remember that mission to Moscow that we watched that just had like really bad, like dating. No, I was sucking my dad off that week. Oh yeah. Yeah. Well, you didn't miss anything. Cause that had yeah. the same style of humor. It's these very old, like, I don't know, like comedy bits, and it was just very odd. Um, again, just very, very strange. Like, but it's like it's it's clearly like you know referencing the Gremlins, but the shit that's funny in the Gremlins is the Gremlins like actually doing stuff, like driving <laughs> drunk and like all the shit that they get into. But like they don't really do anything; they just kind of yell. Oh, come on, you shot head from off the screen, and it's like they for, can't, they yeah. can't John, because they they that would be too expensive. Like the oh, puppets, the finger thing. <laughs> well, the puppets literally, uh, you can tell they only can kind of move like this, like you know, left or right. Yeah. They don't really have like hands or feet, so like that's why they're constantly just kind of yelling things. It's like a really weird. bad mystery science theater, or just mystery science theater, I guess. Yeah, or just mystery science theater. <laughs> Yeah, it's uh, it's pretty funny. I mean, I mean, I don't know, but I was laughing at how terrible. Like, I I think I told Sean, like the jokes are so bad in this movie that it like turns into like anti comedy. Like, it's almost <laughs> like a like a Tim Heidecker like kind of bit. There, like, oh yeah, his, there is one bit that made me laugh for no reason. Where one of the ghoulies just off screen goes, "Yeah, that makes sense." Like, I don't know why <laughs> I laughed at that, but it was like a something Beavis would say. Yeah, but um, yeah, Gog is right. Nothing really happens. The the two buddies like break up, but then they get back together. Like the dean gets his, like they the finally get the did. comic book. They got like, a squirt gun full of goofy glue, which gets mentioned a few times. Doesn't yeah, the it, like the, doesn't the, the, doesn't the guy ghoulies... makes up with his girlfriend for some reason? Doesn't Skip have the ghoulies murder the dean? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. like a Simon Phoenix thing. Like they end up flipping the script and killing him. And then, and then in the end, you got uh he destroys the comic book in the toilet, and all the ghoulies go away, and they all, uh, you know, graduate. I suppose. Um, but that's it. That's Ghoulies Three. Like, there's not a lot. It's mostly tit, some filler. Like, it's silly. Um, it is. Yeah, it is eighty-five percent nudity. <laughs> Like it, it is like it's better than your leprechauns. Um, oh, I was entertained in this. Like, oh, it's, it's yeah. Like, I'm here to, yeah, it's terrible. It's not so but short. I'm, it's very short. Like it's, I mean, it's, it's it's your classic direct to video 1991 situation. Were the other were any of the other ghoulies theatrically? I believe theatrically ghoulies played. one and two were both. If I'm looking at the internet correctly, I believe they were both theatrical released. released. Um, because this is the only one. I think Ghoulies Four might have been, but Ghoulies this one, this one was not because this one was listed as a video, yeah, on IMDb, not a movie. There is a book that came out in two thousand and one, The Complete History of Ghoulies. Um, read, check that date again. I'm pretty sure it's twenty twenty one. What did I say? Oh, I two thousand and one. Sorry, I'm 20... not gonna lie. I'm looking at the still images so... from Ghoulies One, and it looks nuts. 
Does it have Eric Roberts in it? Eric Roberts has like 280 credits, so I wouldn't be surprised. Yeah. He's in a Pat Robertson movie. Yeah. yeah. I hope I can find that at some point. Um, uh, anything else, guys, before we get into No, I mean, it's just Ghoulies 3, man. Tits. It's, it, it's, uh, it is tits. It really is tits. I was trying to see if there's any fun facts of Ghoulies 3. <laughs> Whoever wrote this. Did you check the, the goof third, section? In the, in the, in the third installment, the little demons. Like, wrote this. The little <laughs> demons. Edited this after the dunk thing. Um, <laughs> Yeah, no. They don't even have like they don't have like it's just a synopsis. There's no like fun like trivia on us or nothing. Let's yeah, it's the Wikipedia page. It doesn't even have its own Wikipedia page. Yeah, it's just the series. It's That's linked crazy. to the series. The first two do, and not this one. That's a shame. Um all right. Anything else we want to talk about before we get into our final uh <laughs> Our final scores of Ghoulies Go to Cops. I, I still, uh, Ghoulies Goes to Schoolies is just so much better of a title. Like, I don't it, know why. It really fucked up. I mean, I don't know how, like, how did we, uh, the Gogs, I mean, you should contact them. And, yeah, let's get uh, them on the horn. Let's oh, buy no. the rights and re-release it as Ghoulies Go to Schoolies. <laughs> um, yeah, it's, uh, that's what we can retire on. Will be our Google. Oh money. my God, you guys! Google the director of this movie. He looks like a fucking ghoulie. John Carl Butcher. Jesus Christ! Like this guy looks insane. He looks like Kane Hodder. He he directed Hatchet, which I remember enjoying. Um, that's crazy. Yeah, he literally looks like a fucking ghoulie. Oh, oh man, he, he looks like he looks like. Dead. Didn't one of y'all watch Ginger Dead Man recently? No, recently? but I, I no, but it, it it lived in my house while I was still married. Uh, he looks oh like this John Carl Buchler looks like a fucking inflation porn Vigo Mortensen. <laughs> he's um, it's he directed the first troll. That's, oh, that's not funny. not even the good one. Not even the good one. He also <laughs> he, also, he made a movie that sounds like a Gog's Fever Dream Rage War. <laughs> It looks like if Ted Levine and Dom DeLuise had a kid. Oh, my God. Yeah, God, I think that. Please do, right. do me a favor. If you ever get a chance to read Kane Hodder's autobiography, it's possibly the worst book ever written. It's fucking hysterical. <laughs> okay, I'm into that. Uh, Kane Hodder, not much of a writer, is what you're saying? I've met, no. I've met, I've met Mr. Hodder. He's a, he's an interesting guy. <laughs> he oh, really, well, there we go. really is. <laughs> He is uh he's uh, on the Tom Savini scale, if any of y'all know what I'm talking about there. Oh, he's a fucking dickhead? Uh he's a dickhead and if you're a halfway attractive woman, he will make the entire room super uncomfortable. Yeah, you, uh, you know what's funny about Kane Hodder, he's like, oh, I was a much better Jason. I'm like, bro, you're just a guy with a mask on that sort of walks. Like it's not a difficult yeah. role. <laughs> yeah, right. I remember he talked shit about the one guy that played Jason. I can't remember any of their fucking names, but Sean, you remember that he's like big bull guy. The big he's Swedish like, guy. The guy that was in the Twin Peaks The Return. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That he that guy played Jason too. And and yeah. he was in um he was in I Don't Feel at Home in This World anymore. Yeah. Right? Mm. But he talked, like, Kane Hodder talks shit about him. It's like, bro, no one cares. Like, that movie's a banger, BT dubs. Yeah. Anyway, all right. Five knuckle shuffle time. <laughs> Get done and watch Tampa Bay beat the Philadelphia Eagles. Beat the meat oh, off of the God Eagles. Damn it, dude. I am so off. Alec, before five knuckle shuffles, I apologize. Oh. I am so sorry. God damn it. Actually, before we get into our final scores, uh, was your favorite thing about this movie the educational value of the film and its portrayal of college life? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I didn't go to that sort of a college. <laughs> no, I don't think anybody um, did. Gogs did, kind of. Dude, but if, if college was I mean, like most, this, most colleges like, have more than three buildings on campus. <laughs> Like legit, when they were actually in class, it looked like a dungeon. <laughs> it just yeah, it was like, cavernous, yeah, right? Yeah, it was weird. Yeah, yeah, they they literally were like. Well, it we used to be Castle Ghoulie, right? Like it was like That's, a fucking super oh, yeah. fun site. That's true. <laughs> mm. 
education, everybody. It, it's like a local bank is obviously a pizza hut. It's like local college is obviously a ghoulie castle. Uh, all right, five knuckle shovel time. Alec, I apologize. I, I stepped all over your segment. I, for, I've, I've been slipping the last two weeks. But uh, you get the floor, my friend. Five knuckle shovel time. Out. Oh, uh, negative five. Oh, right. my God, really? Negative yeah. five. I mean, we don't do negatives, but it's a zero. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> like, this movie is it's not even a movie. Yeah. Like, it didn't even get classified as a movie on Wikipedia, IMDb. It just got called oh, a video. Funny. Um, now, th- that is hilarious. Yeah, it's just terrible. Like, the puppets are old and beat up. They don't do that much to begin Like, they don't have much flexibility. They can't do anything. To begin with. They just sit there, and their hands move different things to their mouths. Their mouths don't move. They're, or they barely move. Uh, the acting is horrendous. Everything is horrendous. The movie's horrendous. This guy shouldn't make more things, and I'm pretty sure he really didn't. He made Hatchet. Hatchet was fun. Yeah, I recommend Hatchet. It came out in like 2006. That's a fun movie. So like another, it's a much more competent like slasher like comedy kind of thing. But this is bad with a capital B. It talks out loud. <laughs> yeah, it talks out loud. <laughs> This is the kind of movie we watch that I'm like, I really don't want to watch movies anymore. Like, oh, man. it's just so bad. Um, yeah, like take your Spider-Man three. I'll raise you Ghoulies three. <laughs> it's the worst movie ever made. Uh, oh shit, Sean. Uh, it's a. Well, because we understand the ground rules that we have, it's two for 22 tits. Like, it's this movie's <laughs> fucking, it's terrible. Like, it, it is legit like a zero, but it does have a lot of titty. So, like, I know the threshold. Like, I, I found, like, I know, like, law. I found this movie, like, unwatchable. Like, legit, I don't think I've paid attention to less to a movie than I have to this. And it's like, I love puppets and stupid shit, but it's like the, I, I get, the like um the anti humor aspect of it, but I'm just not here for that right now. Like I just I I fucking hated this. Like I thought it was like just valueless. Uh yeah, I I was it, it just permanently bored the whole time. But it's so that's where I'm at. Uh, Gogs. Yeah, it's two for two tips. I mean, I guess it I mean, could have been the eight way more the amount that was here. <laughs> um, it's it's not a movie. It's a series of things that happen in front of us with sound. Um, it's I spent the I watched this. I I I think I, it probably suffered from the fact that I watched this on my phone uh, whilst making chili, so uh, it didn't get all of my attention. But I got the sound was off, but I got the gist. Um, no, it's not good. Uh, I do want to see the first one now, though, just because looking at all the stills, it looks like it's a much more serious film, and I'm dying to know how we got. It's like going from Chud to Bud to or Chud to Bud the Chud. Like I want to know how we got here. Um, but yeah, it's just you know, it's just it's just horny and sad at the same time. Um, and not what like college was. I wish college had more demons. Uh, TJ. Uh, it's like a six for me, dog. Oh, I love this movie. It's so fucking stupid. It's horrible. <laughs> First of all, it is horrible. It is so fucking terrible. But I laughed my ass off watching this movie because of its ineptitude. Um, also, its overall horniness uh, gave me a lot of nostalgia boners because it reminded me of being a kid and having uh, no access to pornography the way that we have now. And, uh, yeah, I would have definitely yanked, yanked it to this fucking movie. A hundred percent. If this movie came on at like 1.30 in the morning on Cinemax, oh yeah. Um, but no, I don't disagree with anything y'all say. It's, it's an absolutely terrible film. But like, uh, this is the kind of bad that I'll take all day long because I thought it was fucking hilarious. Like, there's just scenes that, that none of the scenes make any sense. The characters 
are terrible and non-existent. They can't work around the, the bad puppets. Like, they just can't because they don't they, – obviously, they, like I said, they have very limited range of movement. I will say the VFX for this, like, when they do, like, the weird gag deaths, are the toilet well folding was pretty good. Yeah, mm-hmm. and the the scene where like they kill the girl in the shower is weird, but like it looks pretty good when they like pull that lady's tongue like around her body. It looked pretty good. Like I don't know. Again, like I don't I don't disagree. This movie is utter trash. But like I was entertained by how fucking terrible it was. Like it made me laugh. And again, like it it harkens back to a time where like comedy was like hey wouldn't it be funny if we just like stared at these naked women like through a window or stole their panties like it's just so hopelessly like out of touch and wrong-headed like i can't help but laugh at it and, and again like the the bare minimum attempt to make this movie have a storyline and characters made it even funnier to me because it's just like it's literally like i just imagine the director and the screenwriter just like dick in one hand and then they're like oh yeah we gotta like <laughs> we have to like tie this together somehow just have them yell stuff yeah it's oh my god that but it, 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 you, it is you saying horrendous but like mm, i thought it was very you funny. saying wouldn't it be funny if women were naked is an incredible take <laughs> i mean that's exactly that's the like, extent of the comedy of this movie it's just like and, and again like i you know what they were doing like it's like it's in the beginning of the show like this is a movie where you can rent it and your parents are going to be none the wiser. Like, if you go, if you bring up to Blockbuster, you bring up Return to Savage Beach, they're going to be like, what the fuck is this? Who is Julie K. Smith? And Google. And, uh, yeah. you know what I mean? And, but this, it's like, oh, it's a horror movie. I guess this is okay. It kind of looks like Gremlins. And then you're like, <laughs> like, you know, what I mean? like, I don't know. Again, I don't disagree with anything you guys said. It is objectively absolutely terrible. But this is the kind of, ter- like, this isn't like, uh, like a Highlander where it's just drug and drug and drug is so stupid that I just, I was, I was thoroughly entertained the entire time. Like, I just thought it was very funny. I don't think it's, it's not good, but like, it's the kind of bad that I wish that we got to watch more of because I never was bored. So that, that's, uh, that's my take. So next week, uh, it's the Moleys. God, mm. the, we will look back. At 2023, and say, "Yep, that should happen." We will also forget all the categories like we do every year. <laughs> we will also uh, have have to have weird ruling requests after we have the categories set during the show. Absolutely, uh, but I'll look forward to it. Uh, it's yeah. always fun to look back. I every time we do the Mullies, it's always like crazy to look back and be like, "Oh man, we reviewed that this year." You know what I mean? Like it always seems like. It seems so long ago that we reviewed certain things, so I'm I'm looking forward to going back to the list and seeing what we what we watched and talking about it. It's always a fun yeah, show. I'm looking forward to being nostalgic for last year. Yeah. Well, yeah. you know, we don't got many more left, so we got. Oh, I hope not. I hope not. <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, you got anything you want to plug? Uh, college, I suppose. Did, did, uh, uh, college. Was that was the the lead naked girl? God, I'm surprised you didn't Google this. Usually, hot. Oh, on I it. did. Was she a Playboy chick? She seemed like a Playboy. I don't uh, believe model. she was. Um, Very. Oh, I was looking. At, oh, actually, no. I take it back. I did not Google her. I googled the lead chick who never took her gear off, and she has never taken her gear off. So you know yeah, what? She was boring to me. I yeah. You know, don't. No, I, need I thought she was attractive. Meh. Fair enough. You know, it's got to love. You know, chasing what you can't get. Suppose. Um, she wasn't a good enough actress to warrant her not being topless in this movie. I know that's a weird statement, but I I, I hope people are on board with it. <laughs> no, I'm with you on that. No, you're 100 percent correct. Um, yeah, she's not can't be above it. <laughs> yeah, you're right. Hilarious. Marie, that was the funniest take I've ever heard. But you know what I'm saying? Oh, wait, like, actually, I I do actually. Actually, looks oh, uh, T.J. Very astute. It looks like Hope Marie Carlton was a Playboy playmate. I figured as much. I mean, you know, I mean, she was, I mean, her whole role in this movie was to just be naked constantly. So it's like, well, she had to be a uh, a, a, a Playboy a model or something. Also, there's one scene in this movie where, like, the bathroom setup, God, as, a, uh, as an engineer, 
That those, yeah. that three back to back showers with all clear clear walls seemed. Just, yeah, what was that? That <laughs> seemed like a very horny situation for a dorm room. Like, it, if you jumped like red light on it, it seems like something that would have been in like a Nicholas Winding Refn movie or a Gaspar No movie. I was like, what is this? like who would shower like we need, we need to have like a horny movie month where we just do like Julie oh, I don't Train know. movies. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know if we could survive. <laughs> Again, return to Savage Beach. Uh, I was uh, TJ Young. TJ was a very big fan of that movie. Look it up. It's uh, I, it, it, Sean. You probably know that guy. The guy that directed all those movies, like Andy. It's like the, 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 I want to say Sedaris, but it's not. But it's something very close. To that. David Sedaris. It's David right. Sedaris. Yeah. <laughs> we watched one of his movies, didn't we? It was that at the that Tim Allen movie. Didn't he write that? No, that's Dave Barry. Dave Sedaris is the Amy, fucking Amy yeah. Sedaris is brother. I thought he wrote that. Anyway, all right, that's the show, everybody. Let's go watch. Right. Bye bye. When is the kickoff for the next game? Eight thirty. Eight thirty. Shortly. I might. I might bias the. Uh, we can get the nineteen eighty five July Playboy magazine on Amazon for six dollars ninety nine cents that has this actress in it. So hey, that ooh. might be someone's Christmas. Or you could just Google it and just. See it. No, print, 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 print. it's tough to get Playboy stills for some reason. Like, I also want the interview with uh, with Chuck <laughs> Yeager and Rob Reiner. Oh my God, they got fucking all over Chuck Yeager's accurate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, all right, everybody. All right, goodbye. Good night, boys. Bye, fellas.